Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim! Kedves vendégeink! Üdvözlöm Önöket itt a Terrorháza Múzeumban, a Vissza a Múltba, Tito Nostalgia Szlovéniában című rendezvényünkön. Fekete Rajmund vagyok, az intézet igazgatója, az esemény házigazdája. Engedjék meg, hogy megkülönböztetett tisztelettel köszöntsem Józsé Desman urat, a szlovéniai eltitkolt tömegsírokkal foglalkozó bizottság elnökét, történészt. Itt Mária professzor asszony, Széchenyi Díjas történészt, a Terrorháza Múzeum főigazgatóját. Nagykövet urat, államtitkár asszonyt, elnök urat, valamint minden kedves vendégünket és barátunkat. Hölgyeim és uraim, amikor antikommunista forradalmaink során Leráztuk magunkról a diktatúra láncait, és a kommunista utópiát maga alá temette az összeomló szovjet birodalom. Az ugyanolyan váratlanul minden különösebb előjel nélkül semmisült meg, mint 90 évvel korábban a cári Oroszország. A rendszerváltoztatás során sokan gondolhatták, hogy a kommunizmus méltó helyére az történelm szemét dombjára került. Pedig már William Faulkner is arra figyelmeztetett, nincs olyasmi, hogy volt, minden van. Igaza lett. A kommunizmussal szemben ugyanis sosem történt meg az az igazságtétel, amely a II. világháborút követően lezajlott a nácikkal szemben. A világból pedig hiányzott a bátorság és a becsület ahhoz, hogy a szocializmus korszakát büntettei feltárásával és elítélésével zárja le. Pedig megmutathatta volna, hogy vannak bűnök, amelyekért nem jár feloldozás, mert nem évülnek el, és hogy az ilyen bűncselekmények elkövetőit előbb vagy utóbb, de utól éri az igazságszolgáltatás. Nagy árat fizettünk ezért. A kommunizmus ugyanis ma is legitim ideológiai, ideológiának számít, képviselői pedig ott vannak, nyugaton a parlamentekben, az egyetemeken, az intézményekben, a médiában és a kulturális élet különböző szintjein. Hőseiknek szobrot állítanak, az elkövetett bűnöket pedig jó szokásukhoz hülyen árnyalják, lekicsinyítik, vagy egyet, egyenesen elbagatelizálják. Egy ilyen hős volt Titó is, aki irán mind a mai napig érzelm, erős érzelmekkel fordulnak a délszláv államok lakói. Személyi kultuszának maradványai pedig a XXI. században is jelen vannak a balkáni társadalmakban. Terek, parkok, utcák viselik a marsal nevét, és az elmúlt bő húsz évben több utódbállamban is kísérletet tettek titószobrok visszaállítására, sikerrel. Nem véletlenül. A szlovén Deló napi lap felmérésében a megkérdezettek 69, míg a Pop TV szavazásában 75 százalékuk talált a titót pozitív személyiségnek. Egy másik közvéleménykutatás szerint a megkérdezettek 65%-a úgy vélekedik, Titó hős volt, nem pedig bűn, bűnös, miközben 1945-ben legalább 100 ezer embert mészároltak le, több mint 750 rejtett helyszínen és temetkezési ponton, amelyek hollétét a titóizmus idején szigorú államtitokként kezelték. 1945. júniusának első tíz napjában a jugoszláv kommunisták több mint 3450 szlovén katonák gyilkoltak meg a horvát határ közelében, Jubjanától délre. Az áldozatokat levetkőztették, személyes tárgyaikat elvették, majd a 16 méter mély szakadékba lőtték őket. Hogy nem maradjon bizonyíték, a területet felrobbantották. 2019-ben közel 3000 köbméternyi törmeléket és sziklát kellett elhordani a szakadék feltárásának a kezdetén. Az áldozatok maradványait a koronavírus járvány miatt végül csak 2022-ben sikerült exhumálni. Most erről a feltárásról mutatunk egy rövid videót, felhívom a figyelmüket, hogy a nyugalom megzavarására alkalmas képsorok következnek.
Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim, engedjék meg, hogy felkérjem Schmidt Mária professzor asszony Széchenyi Díjas történészt a Terrorháza Múzeum főigazgatóját köszöntő beszéde megtartására. Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim, kedves vendégeink, nehéz egy ilyen film után megszólalni, és annál is inkább nehéz, mert ezekről a szörnyű bűncselekményekről természetesen nem tudtunk semmit. Azt tudtuk, hogy 45 után a magyar kisebbséget milyen szörnyű atrocitások érték, amelyek részben bosszúból, részben pedig a kisebbségeknek a megfélemlítése céljából történt. Azt is tudjuk, hogy ezeknek a körülbelül 40 ezer főre teendő áldozatoknak az emlékére hosszú időn keresztül semmiféle elégtételt nem adtak a számunkra, semmiféle bocsánatkérés nem történt, és büszkén mondom, hogy amikor először a délvidéken történt atrocitásokra felhívtuk a figyelmet, és idészöki kiállítást készítettünk itt a Terrorháza Múzeumba, akkor a szerd nagykövet eljött, és a megbékélés jegyében elkezdődött erről a szörnyű tragédiáról egyfajta párbeszéd. Ez volt az első alkalom. A mai témánk Tito, Josip Bros Tito, aki a kommunista mozgalomnak az egyik régi kipróbált harcosa volt, aki már a spanyol polgárháború idején is a szovjet titkosszolgálatok megbízásából párizsi tartózkodása alatt a különböző önkéntesek útleveleit beszedte és szervezte, hogy melyik, hova, melyik nemzetközi brigádhoz kerül a harcolni, tehát egy régi kipróbált szovjet ügynökről beszélünk akkor, amikor Tito kerül szóba. Ennek ellenére miután 30 éven keresztül állt a nyugati nagyhatalmak jóvoltából összetákolt Jugoszláviának az élén, melyet úgy az első világháború, mint a második világháború után mesterségesen ö, raktak össze, ö, és ebb, ennek az országnak az élén egyfajta olyan politikát ö, ö, valósított meg, amelyben ö, kihasználta azt a geopolitikai helyzetet, ami a Szovjetunió, illetve a nyugati nagyhatalmak közé helyezte őket, és megpróbálta az érdekeit hol az egyik, hol a másik irányba fordulva érvényesíteni. Tulajdonképpen egy olyan megbecsült helyet vívott ki magának a, a történetírásban, a közvéleménybe, amelyet nem rombolt le a mai napig se senki. Ilyen képeket nem mutattak vele kapcsolatban a mai napig. Igazából senki nem beszél arról, hogy ennek a 30 évnyi vezetői megbizatásának az időszaka alatt milyen el nyomó rendszert működtetett Jugoszláviában, hány ember esett ennek a rendszernek áldozatul, mi volt annak a különböző alkotó államok közötti békének a, az ára, amit ő ott megvalósított. És az, hogy mai napig a titói korszak egyfajta idézőjelben mondom, aranykorként él a volt Jugoszlávia ö, lakosságának a, a képzeletében, a tudatában, annak az is az oka, 
hogy ahogy itt szó volt róla, 1945 és 74 között, amíg Tito vezette Jugoszláviát, addig a hidegháborús időszakban Jugoszlávia mint egy hát elfogadható nyugat felé is nyitott ország került bemutatásra. És a kommunista rendszerek bukása után pedig, és erről is volt itt szó, nem rendeztek olyan ö, nemzetközi katonai törvényszékek előtti számonkérő bűnpereket, mint amilyet Nürnbergben, illetve Tókióban a második világháború alatt után rendeztek, sőt, a nyugati hatalmak mindent elkövettek annak érdekében, hogy ne kerüljön ö, semmiféle számon kérésre sor, és ne tudja meg a világ azt, hogy milyen árat fizettek azok az emberek, akik szovjet fennhatóság alá kényszerültek a szövetségesek beleegyezésével. Tehát van adósság, ami a számunkra azért is nagyon fontos, mert hát Tito sok ponton a magyar történelemmel is nagyon szoros kapcsolatban állt, hát végül is egy szomszédos országnak a vezetőiről beszélünk, még abban is szerepe volt, hogy Kádár János került a magyar szocialista munkáspárt forradalmi kormányának az élére 1956 forradalma és szabadságharca után. Tehát Tito személye a számunkra is érdekes, a Tito nosztalgia a számunkra is egy káros ö, olyan nosztalgia, amelyel le kell számolnunk, és Remélem, hogy ez a mai előadás egy fontos lépés lesz ebbe az irányba. Köszönöm, hogy meghallgattam. Köszönöm, főigazgató asszony. Kik azok az úgynevezett titofil konzervatívok, akiknek kiinduló pontja az új sztálinizmus? A kommunizmus áldozatainak emléknapjának az eltörlése, illetve felszámolása Szlovéniában egy lépés lenne a múlt eltörlése felé. Miért kellett megszűnnie a szlovén függetlenségi múzeumnak, vajon Nyugat-Európa pedig tudatosan fordít a hátat a kommunizmus borzalmainak? Megtiszteltetés, hogy mindezen kérdésekről ma Józsi Desman történész, a korábban felállított szlovén köztársaság kormányának eltitkolt tömegsírokkal foglalkozó bizottságának az elnöke fog beszélni, aki korábban, illetve volt a szlovén kortárs történeti múzeum, illetve a szlovén köztársaság levéltárának az igazgatója. Ms. Schmidt de Raimund, thank you for invitation. You see, uh, the topic I will tell you It's somehow my personal story. It's the story of small nation, neighborhood nation. It's uh, or truth or new Stalinism. I would like to start that uh, perhaps we can talk of, of uh, work of the dead. It's quite important book of Lacare. And I'm quite sympathetic to the idea that we are all dependent of our uh, dead people, how to behave with them, how to we treat with them. It will be the story of that, but also the story about li our us living ones, and we are we have this dilemma: truth or new Stalinism. Uh, Slovenia is, of course, well connected to Hungary, but there is one uh, obstacle. I would say, in Slovenian case, we have two iron curtains. Forty-five is iron curtain to the west. We will see quite alive. Uh, we were behind Iron Curtain to the west. But out of 48, out of Stalin's expulsion of Tito from Command Forum, we have also Iron Curtain to the east. And this Iron Curtain is still affecting our relations. We don't have very effective dialogue because of our super confidence, how different we were from our neighbors or, uh, from the east. And we would say, uh, you see, we are somehow prisoners of history. 
Keith Lowe has written an important book about very unsuccessful monuments to the World War II. One is in Slovenia, a monument to the victims of all wars. And uh, Keith Lowe is telling us that nobody is noticing it. We are remembering, but not remembering. So we have a, quite a problem how to articulate our, our attitude to these are two big blocks. And they don't have, still don't have, after seven years, still don't have inscription to whom they are dedicated. But uh, Keith Lowe is also mentioning your monument to victims of uh, Nazism as problematic. So we do have here a, a touching point. Uh, uh, the Slovenian attitude to our history, you know, we didn't lose territory, we got territory. We got with uh, 74 and 54 with London, with Paris Conference and London Agreement, we got more than fifth of national territory. We got limited uh, republic in socialism, and that is one source of communist. Uh, communists are quite successfully exploiting. But on the other side, we have the state, uh, Peter Jambrek, first president of Constitutional Court, that was based on murder, robbery, violence, political arbitrary interventions, and it was maintained on the basis of fear. Deception, lies, indoctrination, manipulation of public, and so on and so on. The same story as everywhere. And uh, especially Dr. Jambrek is stressing participation on original murder and silence about it were essential features of the regime. It was fundamental commitment and the source of personal lo loyalty. Uh, we have few decisions of constitutional court about past times, and one is in previous totalitarian system, the Institute of Social Political Suitability was a key and indispensable instrument of repression for maintaining the power of monopoly of, of monopoly political party and the establishment of free social order in Slovenia took place in 1990. So we have constitutional division of old repression, totalitarian times and new republic. And we could say that Republic of Slovenia is a state built on different constitutional and civilization foundation than the Socialist Republic of Slovenia and Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. But it's not so simple. In 2006, I was director of Museum of Contemporary History. We put the exhibition uh, United in Victory, 15 Years of Republic, on Ljubljana Castle. It was opened in one day by mayor of Ljubljana, owner of the castle. And as it was mentioned, in 2022, so now, uh, the so-called Janša's government, right-wing government, established the Museum of Slovenian Independence, and it was abolished in 2023 with this new government of Republic of Slovenia. And just to show you, it was always democratic, and independent Slovenia was always a problem for communists. All people that were telling about independent Slovenia was pursued by secret political police. And our research is nearly all, let's say, Francis Butcher, first president, president of first uh, democratically elected parliament, Joži Pucnik, leader of democratic oppositions, or were imprisoned or uh, 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 removed from their sites. And one case is a uh, leader of uh, anti-Union uh, of Slovenian Communists, Janis Toplišek. He was uh, imprisoned, uh, uh, kidnapped to Slovenia, and then killed in jo And what would we call a new Stalinism? Uh, we can talk about Kuchanism. Milan Kuchan had luck. Uh, his father was... Uh, on Hungarian side during the war, but mob was mobilized in German army. And then luckily uh, he, uh, he went on uh, partisan side and fought as, uh, on right side. And so Kuchan was a good orphan. 
but his uncle was hanged in, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, after the war in Murska Sobota, a straighter. So not a simple story, but we can talk about Kuchanism, about Deep State, Old, Bo old Boys Network, Forces Constituted, and so on. And the person that is a living, a living leader of this post-Titoist, uh, uh, let's say, efforts to preserve and defend lies taboos, mythomania, war crimes, and crimes against humanity, and impunity of uh, communist criminals is Milan Kuchan. Uh, his most exposed, I don't know if this is a uh, crown prince, we can, we can say if this is his, uh, if this is next new Kuchan, he's mayor of Ljubljana, and he's preventing the burial of murdered Roma, uh, majority of Roma in Slovenia were, were murdered by communists, not by uh, national socialists. And he prevents uh, the burial of victims. And, but what is his relation to truth? He is telling there will be no monuments to, let's say, anti-communist. Uh, uh, Ljubljana is hero city, no co anti communist But you have a memorial plate for anti-communists in middle of Ljubljana. You have a mass murdered uh, place where in the beginning of June, 80 to 2,000 victims was murdered. So this is, uh, this is a place where, uh, abyss where people were murdered. Then the water was poisoned. They were re-excavated to a valley nearby. So no graves. <laughs> where is the truth? Where is the common reason? What, what is Mayer talking about? Uh, special places Orlovark, Eagles Peak, uh, near Ljubljana Castle. There was a uh, uh, war, war cemetery for anti communist units. And it was in Republic of Slovenia. There were some memorial events for the uh, victims. And you know, there, the secret police uh, told the public that all uh, human remains were excavated. In 2017, we have discovered that uh, the remains are still there. And now we have a fight. Some crosses were put. Uh, these crosses were removed. And there is a dog training place there. So this is uh, the relation between reality and truth in uh, capital of Slovenia. Uh, this is the scene when Janez Zimlerich, he was Minister of Veterans Affairs, Chief of Political Police, was buried with stay honor in January 23. Uh, so this lady, young lady, is Minister of Culture, extreme left. And I would say here we can talk about coalition between old boys and let's, let's say this new progressive left, imported in many elements from West. He, she is celebrating the, the establishing of Communist Party, of Stalinist Communist Party. Natasha Pirts Musar, she is a new rich, uh, so this, let's say, uh, as in Hungary, also in Slovenia, the communists took a lot of uh, ex uh, state property. And she said, anti fascism, yes, anti communism, no. A revolution is based on democratic and independent Slovenia. So that's so simple in Slovenia. Uh, I will tell you, so some, per, I will be here a little bit personal. In 2002, we had uh, exhibition uh, uh, between uh, uh, Hitler's cross and Red, uh, Red Star. Huge protest also by Austrian nationalists and Slovenian communists. Uh, the problem was, of course, this symbol. Uh, we nearly lost our hats, so it was quite, uh, quite alive. Uh, 2018, interview with me and Jose Mujina. He is also widely attacked, historian and journalist. And you see the protests of communists. In, uh, it's it's Copper 2018. Uh, Mujina and Dejman on the way to martyrdom. So nearly threatened with. We will kill you, so simple. <laughs> uh, I told only this simple statement, for example. Uh, 
partisans killed more, so communist partisans killed more Slovenians than occupiers. They killed more unarmed than armed, and more after the war than during it. Uh, and they provoked the civil war. So simple. Uh, just to illustrate some features of, uh, as Mr. Schmidt says, unknown site of Titoism, it's Slovenian case. So one member of Udba, 1,200 inhabitants, uh, informs one member of Udba for, 2000, uh, for 282 inhabitants. So it's a density of political police control similar to Stasi, quite similar. A sentence to death, so uh, uh, 15,000 people were killed after, so 1% of population was killed without trials, but uh, 40, uh, 40, uh, 45 uh, till 52, at least 2,080 persons were sentenced to death and killed. But we have, let's say, about 30 more new names, so it's approximately less in Hungary. Hungary uh, Iron Curtain. Uh, was it Iron Curtain or not? You see, in eight months between April 49 and January 50, uh, 192 people were killed on, uh, on borders toward Austria and Italy. It's more than was killed on Berlin Wall in 30 years. Uh, 20,000 people sentenced in show trials. Prisons and camp, about 70,000 people because some were arrested twice, twice. And they, uh, a lot of thousands of people were sent to forced labor without sentences, without arrests, on million and half population. War against private property entrepreneurship till uh, 48, 90% of uh, private enterprises were confiscated and uh, a big fight against uh, middle classes all the time war against farmers, the say, uh, uh, us in Hungary, not so, <laughs> not so successful as in other Eastern countries, but uh, private farmers were with this uh, limitation of, uh, of property to 10 hectares of land pro family were, were nearly destroyed. Uh, permanent war against religion and church, the most fierce in 50s, because we split it to Stalin, the wildest period of Stalinization had begun in Slovenia. It lasted at least seven years after that. Uh, fugitives, so at least uh, for uh, nearly uh, uh, 50,000 people tried to escape. Uh, some few, thousand, few tens of thousands were arrested. So people, this, let's say, uh, revolt by foot. <laughs> Uh, was also uh, permanent. Uh, one feature I would like to, so we have, you had approximately 800,000 communists at the end, I would say, let's say 8% of population. It's also in Slovenia the same, but we must say, how can we illustrate that communism was not the most attractive idea? You see that uh, during the existence of Communist, Communist Party of Slovenia, more than 200,000 members were there. At the end was uh, another, let's say only 100,000. And to see it was up and down. Uh, 48 people are coming in, 68 people are coming in, 47 with this uh, self-management revolution, people are coming in but in majority people are getting out of the party. It was not a very, uh, an, uh, especially uh, the party that would fight for, for proletarians was party of new class at the end. No, no, no workers in the party. The second elections was also in people, it was not, not elections. Uh, Self-managing utopia, I would say here we can uh, share the experience of goulash communism and self-management uh, because Hungary and Yugoslavia was, was the most depth, uh, 
the most bankrupt societies in the East was Hungary and Yugoslavia, and self-management self in Yugoslavia was a recipe for, for bankruptcy. Uh, just to show you what was it, how far from life is it, you can see here the news, Tito's Newspeak, where all uh, the complication of the system, it's 84, 87, 86, so uh, nearly 300,000 people were elected in different bodies, and nobody knows what to decide of. But on the other side, when all these people have entered system, they have right to talk. And after the 87, <laughs> the, the most destructive force in... Uh, in Yugoslavia, a self-managing community. Uh, for example, some, uh, some uh, I am sure you, you also have uh, this new lingua imperi, titi lingua imperi caderne. It was a language far from reality, far from normality. I would say also uh, Ljubo Sirs, he was, uh, he was uh, a champion of critic of uh, communist economies. Uh, we, uh, we honored him in 2016. Uh, I lectured about him in House of Lords. And the basic problem is that in Slovenia, this, uh, let's say, post-Titoist or new Stalinist or Titofil conservatives are not willing to have a dialogue. They don't want to talk about essential topics, about facts, about new interpretations. They believe they can, they can go through force and propaganda. Some facts about transitional justice, because anyhow, in Slovenia, we tried to, to, to get, uh, to, to compensate the wrongs of history. And the communist side had preserved all the rights. That's a few billions euros. Denationalization and other uh, compensations so political trials, few thousand cases when people got compensation. Uh, law of Redress of Injustices Act with 34, 5,000 cases. Uh, denationalization with uh, nearly 40,000 cases, also a few billion, billion euros. And uh, let's say about right to grave and memory. Uh, World War II was an extremely complex process. Slovenia has experienced not, not free totalitarian regimes, uh, fascism from, from year 20 in Italy, uh, national socialism also very in uh, Slovenian minority in Austria, and of course this uh, crazy Stalinism. Uh, but we are sharing the, the common region, Alpe Adria, where Six, seven nations are fighting for the same territory. It's, it's our destiny, anyhow. Uh, we were living in light. Till fall of the communism, about 60,000 victims were, but only 46,000 were good victims. All others were tabooed. Now we have a name list of uh, uh, 100,000 victims of World War II and after it, so 7%, nearly 7% of population. So we can compare us as this uh, tragic harmon of Europe with uh, Poland, uh, Germany, Hungary, Austria, Slovenia, Balkans, Romania. And you see victimological map of Slovenia. Nearly 10% of population is lost in so-called Ljubljana region, Ljubljana province, uh, because there was wild civil war. 7%, 5% where civil war was not so severe, where there was combination of resistance and civil war. And you see in Prekmuria, in Exior region, uh, the people were most safe somehow, uh, except Jews, of course. 2% uh, of population, so more than 30,000 people lost a life since Slovenian civil war. 2% of population, is the same number as in American Civil War and Spanish Civil War. And Americans are still fighting with consequences of this brotherhood killing. Uh, not, not much better are in Spain. And so Slovenian society 
is just opening to the consequences of civil war. As you see, communists has killed approximately 25,000 people, 1% of population after the war, anti-communists about 5,000. Uh, who has started? Communists has killed more than 1,000 Slovenian civilians before anti-communist resistance began. And because of communist pressure and terror, the anti-communists have collaborated with, first with fascists and then with national socialists. But in principle, when we sum up together, uh, about 2.9% of population kill, was killed in, on communist side, and 2.9% was killed or in German army, where Slovenians were forcibly mobilized German army, or in Hungarian army, or in the Italian army, or in anti-communist units. It's not white and black picture, but we must open to it. It's, it's just beginning. Uh, so this is the think we are opening. Uh, Drago Jancher, you have quoted it in your book, Mr. Schmidt, and uh, he, was, uh, he was rewarded as a uh, communist journalist in, in beginning of 75. In November, 74, in November, he was sentenced to one year because he brought from Austria a book that was telling about uh, post-war mass killings. And in 98, he organized the exhibition Dark Side of the Moon, first major exhibition of Aust about crimes of communism. And you see, in 2010, he wrote a book, I saw her that night, translated in more than 20 languages, also Hungarian. It's telling the story about Kapel Hribar, murdered by communists in January uh, 44. A nephew, Peter Hribar, uh, succeeded in uh, judicial rehabilitation. Uh, in 2015, we have excavated the couple. The remains memorial plate was put on their castle by, uh, by President Pachor and nephew. This, in the nationalization process, this castle was paid by state papers to the family and is still a residential object of republic. And the fact is that uh, in Slovenian case, this division of victims and uh, alive people in party heaven and party, party hell was uh, something really racistic, something it's really Titoist apartheid or communist structural ras racism or how do we call it? And you see that nearly half of victims were in party hell, part of victims were in party heaven. And if your relatives were in party hell, it was bad for you. It was collective responsibility. Uh, and uh, also this divided the people. And you, we, have, we have, in principle, two cities of the dead. This is the communist one with only 20,000 birds because they have erased all the Catholic parties and graves from state registers because they are all Catholics. So we have on Victoria's site only uh, monuments with red star. And this is the map of uh, concealed mass graves. So this is the secret city of the dead. This was the boot, controlled by political police, destroyed as much as possible. And we come to the other point. So in 2022, Jansha's government uh, declared the Day of Remembrance for Victims of Communism. In 2022, it was suspended, as Raimund has mentioned. Why May 17th? Uh, it, uh, 54 civilians, 40 them, 49 of them Roma, were murdered on May 17th, 42. Uh, we have excavated them in 2017. Uh, this is a pregnant woman killed. Uh, uh, a, a Roma woman that had expelled the killing field and was caught afterwards and killed. And even dogs were killed with uh, this Roma community. Uh, half of them were children. Majority of them women and children. So we have in Slovenia more than 700 mass graves with 100,000 victims. 
It's the worst mass murder after the Second World War II in Europe. We have 10 Srebrenica in Slovenia, for example. It's the worst fratricide of Slovenian population. It's the worst fratricide of Croats and the worst fratricide of uh, Serbs and uh, Montenegros because the principle was Slovenians were killing Slovenians, Croats were killing uh, Croatian people, and Serbs were killing their own. Uh, so the, in, Slo in Yugoslavia, it's one, so as, as I have mentioned, 1% uh, of population killed in Slovenia, more than 80,000 in Serbia. It's from uh, entering the Red Army, a few months of killing before. Uh, Montenegro, it's not 5,000, it's more than 10,000. 100,000 Bos Croatian, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, and German prisoners war. More than a quarter of a million of people were killed by Tito. And you cannot call it liberation, let's say, for the beginning. Uh, our commission, uh, I am the president of commission from 2005. Uh, we are working under eighth government. Uh, two or three times they tried to change us, but in principle, uh, we are the only Perpetrator, there were there we uh, the criminal officer Paul Yamnik, who was leading criminal police uh, operation reconciliation. He tried to accuse uh, uh, Mitya Ribicic, the ex-president of Yugoslav government, the ex-president of Yugoslav communists, but uh, it was fake decision by court, and he was saved. But he he completely vanished from the public after that. Uh, when we began, uh, we opened some major locations, uh, anti-tank trench in Tezna. It's more than 5,000 victims in 940 meters of the anti-tank trench. Uh, Croatians and some Serbs probably. But in Maribor, first reconciliation pyramid was dedicated to the boot victims in 90. And, uh, it was also great for these victims. It's Memorial Park of Memories there. 2009, uh, it was a major shock for, from Slovenian society. It was mine in Hudayama. Uh, 3rd March, uh, near, uh, it was mummified bodies. It was 11 barriers were, were uh, so nearly five meters of concrete, of clay, of uh, bricks, uh, till we get we get there. We got there. There were these were the scenes that the, it was international news. Uh, this is Frankfurter Allgemeine. Uh, typical product is wire handcuffs. Uh, uh, these scenes so disabled, and the the hand with the. the uh, so wounded, uh, it, uh, disabled, were killed everywhere. Uh, after two thousand, after entering the, after entering this mine, so uh, ring hidden in the mouth, uh, rosary hidden in the shoe. Uh, in two thousand nine, we made an exhibition about the, the discovery, and. Uh, let's say, work of the dead. President Turk, uh, at the time President of the Republic, on March 8, 2009, said this is uh, a second-rate problem. I will talk only about first-class subject, subject, that is Day of the Women. Uh, it was a huge scandal, and he clearly lost next election. Uh, till after that, all Slovenian politicians are somehow afraid what to say about the topic. The second, uh, uh, the second uh, terrible thing for this Titoist site was the, as a reaction on discovering Hudayama, uh, Council City uh, of Ljubljana renames Tito Street, and 2011 Constitutional Court prohibits the renaming of Tito Street. And just to comment, uh, Raymond, this uh, 
idea of public polls about Tito, if you ask such questions, you will, you will always get uh, suitable percents. If you will really ask about these terrible things that were done, I think the answers would be the others. So it's, uh, it's this poll production of public opinion. After the, uh, it was 430 people killed in this uh, horizontal shaft. After that, the authorities tried to stop, le so left-wing government tried to stop the excavation. It was this situation of decaying mortal remains in the mind that dead people were working. It was enormous debate in Slovenian society of or, or this is right or this is wrong. And in 2016, all 1,410 victims were buried in, uh, in a cemetery in Maribor with, you see, Andrei Plinkovic, now president of Croatian government, the highest uh, uh, representatives of Slovenian and, uh, and the Croatian authorities were there. Uh, also, there were some law changes that the commission can work normally. But at the time we have excavated more than 9,000 victims, we have arranged a lot of mass graves in nature. Uh, this, this is the, the, the locations that, were, that are arranged. We are putting fences, uh, memorial plates, and so on. Identification of the victims is it's quite Im nearly impossible, but, but we are keeping uh, right femurs in special depot of, of uh, forensic laboratory. And now Kuchewski Rock, the scenes you have seen at the beginning, it's Abyss under Macesnova Gorica. Uh, why is it important? In July 8, 1990, there was symbolic funeral of these victims in Kuchewski Rock. I would say it's the same situation as Imre Naji funeral in Hungary. After that, uh, communism was, <laughs> was nearly dead. So, so again, work of the dead. But this location, and the communists knew that, it's not location of Slovenians. It's location of uh, Serbs and Croats, as we have I identified after the research. Uh, in 2004, it was, it was a fake funeral, we must say. It was, again, uh, communists were fooling Slovenian nation once again. Uh, we know from some survivors that have escaped the cave. This is 65. And these are people that have escaped the cave. They all lived, uh, nearly all lived in, this one has drowned a few years after the war. And one of the survivors was father of Janis Jansha, uh, the ex-president of Slovenian government. So now, then we have identified all these uh, objects in 2004. They are Catholic, they are most, many of them Slovenian. And now next uh, research in 2017, we found the way where the victims were led to the abyss. This is reconstruction of the abyss. And you, you see all these uh, dark, dark section, it was mined approximately 10 years after the war. 3,000 cu cubic meters of the material collapse in the, in the cave. This is beginning of the research. First, uh, mortal remains. Then it was COVID time and we have, end, we have begun in 2022. So beginning end, uh, it's, Let's say 3,450 uh, 3, murdered, 800 more than 24 years, uh, 820 to 23, and 800 less than 20 years. Uh, all males, and uh, we are trying to give them grave in Ljubljana, uh, but I was. You see, we have uh, exported the problem to European Parliament this year. It was petition preserving the memory of the victim of the post-war communist period in Slovenia. 
the Committee of the European Parliament supported the petition on March 14, uh, 2024. On April 10, we are opening uh, exhibition in Slovenian in Ljubljana, but that I must say the Ministry of Culture has has canceled. Uh, he didn't allow to have exhibition in museum. I was uh, I was canceled as director of museum last year, and this uh, exhibition was not allowed. So we are doing it privately. We are preparing documentary about 40 minutes and uh, six report of the commission in book. And on 15th of April, we are opening the exhibition in European Parliament. So I would say it's. Uh, these are probably not very big steps in Slovenian culture war, but we are defining the problem. We will see where this stubborn uh, existence of denial of facts, and I would say it's, this denial of facts is not rational, it's, uh, it's religion. Uh, so this is approximately the situation in Slovenia. I would say the dead are working, the truth, we know a lot, so anybody who is rational can, can say about it, but it would be valuable that we on the East could exchange this experience, could do something more in collaboration, especially because anyhow after, after 90, uh, Slavs are big troublemakers in Europe, first we made all these terrible wars in Yugoslavia. Now Russians, Ukrainians are making their new spectacle and it would be fine to get some, uh, some common reason back uh, in this area. Thank you.